Okay, uh, good evening. <coughs> this is uh, Professor David J. De Los Reyes, okay? <coughs> My topic for uh, this session will be a long video format uh, discussion uh, and this will be alternating current circuit. Uh, this will be a solution of the circuit using nodal steering. This is just for uh, verification purposes of the past lessons. Okay, let's proceed. Uh, topic for uh, tonight, alternating current circuit, lesson number 37, uh, using nodal steering. Uh, this uh, topic will be a verification of the past lessons so we will try to bring out the load current by using nodal steering. Okay, uh, I will try to give you the given problem. Uh, this was from the past three lessons, so I will be bringing the solution using nodal steering. And supposed to be, if I will try to uh, discuss the final current before I will explain the explanation of this, the load current using nodals, uh, nodal steering is 16.23 angle 28.7 degrees. Oh, this should be negative. Right? 28.7 degree amperes. From the previous three lessons in which our solution was different from this, the first solution by using Lope equation, Thevenin's theorem, Norton's theorem, the current is 16.225 negative 27.7 degree amperes. So they are all similar for the four uh, solutions now because this will be the fourth solution. Okay, let's try to bring out the solution. <coughs> we are given two voltage sources connected in parallel, supply a common load CL. The problem is just asking for the value of the load current. Okay. <coughs> uh, these are the given values C1, C2, CL. Right. E1, E2. Uh, we are to look for the current IL. Uh, under nodal steering, the concepts in which uh, I have introduced or I have discussed with you guys. For a nodal uh, steering, the connection is actually a perfect parallel connection. Uh, it's called uh, perfect parallel. Uh, this one is in parallel with this, in parallel with the common load. And if it is a perfect parallel connection, okay, the value of B sub L the value of B sub L will be E1 over C1 E2 over C2 all over 1 over C1 1 over C2 plus 1 over CL and which if we try to compute for I sub L I sub L will be B sub L over C sub L so to compute for the load current IL, this one, we must have to re uh, evaluate all these values here separately, so we will be systematic. Uh, this is just good for two voltage sources, okay? because if there is three, there should be an additional thing here, E3 over C3 plus 1 over C3 at the bottom. So, no dull theorem is very flexible, okay? Uh, it depends on how many voltage sources, right? So, since the given problem is uh, comprises only of two voltage sources, the numerator will just be simply two, that is E1 over C1, E2 over C2. Okay? Okay, let's try to evaluate. Oh, this is just an AC matter now. <coughs> uh, because we are given the equation, after the computation of this, we will just divide B sub L by C sub L and we could compute for our proper I sub L. So, nodal theorem is actually a very 
systematic and very concise and easy to re remember solution. Not unlike in the Tevinens and Nortons, in the computation of the open circuit impedance, you will be using the so-called series parallel concepts over there. Uh, there's no problem over there, but uh, it's a little bit uh, illogical, you know. For, uh, for noodles, uh, it was a place, uh, it was derived already that B sub L will be this equation here because uh, B sub L is actually the voltage across this. Oh, this is you know, that's why it is termed to as nodals. The voltage across this is termed to as B sub L, the nodal voltage. Okay. The solution is very specific because it was given already all in here. You don't have to manipulate like a series parallel thing in here. It's all here already. So it's just a matter of uh, being uh, what you call this uh, systematic. So to compute for V sub L, uh, we compute, uh, we will be needing pi by values E1 over C1, E2 over C2, 1 over C1, 1 over C2, and 1 over C2. So we will compute this one all separately. So E1 over C1, what comes out will be this one here, the rectangular equivalent. E1 is 250, Z1 is 0.6 in the 25. Performing the operation, uh, it's just a vector operation. Complex operation. For E2 over C2, it will be E2 is 240, angle 15. C2 is 0.8, angle 30. Converting to rectangular after dividing, okay, this will be the rectangular equivalent. Negative 15, so this is negative J. This is negative 45, so this is negative J. So just be careful with the sign. Okay? Uh, just take it easy while using your calculator. Then 1 over C1, it will be 1 over 0.6 angle 45 degrees. Uh, I just want to emphasize here that the value 1 can be written as 1 angle 0 degree, right? All over 0.6 angle 45 degrees it's a real part and uh, in terms of polar that, that's one angle zero so if we try to divide it should be the magnitude one over 0.6 which is 1.67 and the angle should be we raise this up zero minus 45 it will now be negative 45 okay uh, because you might be thinking that one is not expressed in terms of polar one is just a one is just actually this is it seems this is one plus j zero right or one angle zero degree rectangular re, rectangular equivalent of one over c one is uh, this one here it's negative also and the value will be the same real part imaginary part this 45 degrees sine and cosine of 45 degrees are the same so this is 1.18 minus j 1.18 for 1 over C2, it's the same. 1 angle, uh, 1 is actually 1 angle 0 degree, so over 0 0.8 angle 30 degree. 1 over 0 0.8 is 1.25. 0 minus 30 will be negative 30 degrees. We raise this up. Okay, and this should be 1.08. Okay, angle, oh, my 1.08 minus 0.625. Uh, the cosine value is greater than the sine value for a 30 degrees. Okay. And 1 over CL, uh, 1 over CL is 1 over 12 plus GA. Uh, CL is actually 12 plus GA. So if we try to divide, uh, we will convert 12 plus GA to polar. 8 divided by 12, first arc tangent, it will be 33.69 degrees. Take the cosine, you divide that value cosine to 12, what comes out is 14.42. So 1 over 14.42 will be 0 0.069, 33.69, okay, uh, we raise this up, okay, this will be the value, okay. Converting to rectangular, uh, take the cosine times 0 0.069 is 0 0.057. 
take this side times 0 0.069 it is 0 0.038 rectangular of 1 over CA okay uh, so we are just being systematic uh, because uh, we want to fill up the values on here to compute from this side oh what's next uh, we must have to add E1 over C1 plus E2 over C2 E1 over C1 plus E2 over C2 uh, I didn't place the values now but uh, I did it like this uh, I will take the rectangle uh, real part here plus the real part here this should be the value okay for the imaginary part this is minus this is minus so the imaginary part will add up 294 plus 77.64 will be 372.27 plus the imaginary part minus converting to polar we divide this divided by this one press arc tangent what will come out will be negative 32.49 degrees am I, am I still on camera take the cosine you divide that to the value of 584.41 the magnitude of the sum will be 692.90 so we now know the single equivalent of this right the numerator portion for the denominator portion uh, we are actually given three items one over c1 one over c2 one over cl right so and we have expressed uh, these values here all in rectangular already so 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over CL. I didn't place the value, but I did it like this. The real part is uh, 1.18 plus 1.08 plus 0 0.057. The total is 2.317, this one. Uh, let's try to check the sign of the imaginary part. This is minus J minus j this minus j so we will just add up the magnitude of all the imaginary parts so the first imaginary is 1.18 plus 0.625 plus 0.038 that will be 1.843 okay changing to polar 1.843 divided by 2.317 press arc tangent it will be 38.5 degrees negative this is a uh, minus j Take the cosine, you divide that value cosine to the magnitude 2.317. The overall magnitude of this will be 2.96. Okay. So this will now, so we now know the value of the denominator. So this will now by using this equation here. It will be 692 divided by 2.96. Of course with the angles, right? Minus 32.49, this is minus 38. The magnitude of B sub L will be 234.08. Uh, we raise this up. This one is greater than this. And the angle will be 5.01 degrees volts. That's the voltage across this. So for nodals, okay, uh, B, uh, I sub L now will be the, because the voltage across this, is same as the voltage across the load because they are in parallel. So IL now will be 234.08 and C sub L in terms of polar is this one. Right? So this is 14.42 angle 33.69 degrees. 234.08 so Two thirty-four point zero eight divided by fourteen point forty-two. Uh, the magnitude is sixteen point twenty-three. This is sixteen point twenty-three, and the angle should be five point zero one minus this. Uh, it's negative twenty-eight point seven. It's almost the same as uh, twenty-seven point seven. Uh, it just depends on the accuracy of the calculator, or maybe the calculator on the first solutions is uh, more powerful than the next one so that's why the accuracy is a little, there is a little bit but uh, as regards the magnitude for no doubts it is 16.23 and for the past three solutions using loop equations 
Devenant Theorem and Norton Theorem, the current is 6.225, almost 16.23. Angle negative 27.7 degrees. Okay, uh, that's it, guys. Oh, that's uh, our solution for tonight by using Nodal's Theorem. So, by using, uh, by presenting four solutions, uh, we have achieved that the load current for the given problem, okay, was the same, 6.225 or 16.23. Okay, uh, good evening from Los Angeles, Professor David J. Velocities. Okay, if you want to subscribe to my channel, my channel is at youtube.com slash at prop David J. Velocities. If you want to share it, please click share. Uh, good evening from Los Angeles. Professor David Jenner, right?